In lesson two, we'll be discussing the number line and ordering and also rounding whole numbers. The first part of this lesson on number lines and ordering, the best way I think to understand this is just to do some practice problems and look at practice problem A. What I want you to do there is arrange those numbers in order from least to greatest and use a number line to do that. So let's just go ahead and draw out a number line. And a number line is just what sounds like what it says. It's a line and you put tick marks on it to represent numerical places. It's kind of like a ruler basically. And so let's just put some tick marks and try to make them evenly spaced. And it doesn't matter that they're perfectly evenly spaced or anything. And then we'll just go ahead and identify some values for these different tick marks or assign values. It doesn't matter which values we use, but we want values that will represent this set of numbers that we have. So we'll start with a negative 8 on the left side. And I'll put a number down every two tick marks. Negative 6, negative 4, negative 2, 0, 2, 4, 6. Now when we have negative numbers, we call those integers. In lesson one we talked about counting numbers and whole numbers. Integers, those are like whole numbers except they're like the opposites of whole numbers or the opposites of counting numbers. Like the opposite of one would be a negative one. The opposite of five would be a negative five and so on. And as you can see on a number line, all negative numbers are to the left or less than zero. So let's go ahead and start marking some of these on the number line. Start with negative six and we can just put a dot there to represent negative six and if you want to you can use a different color pen or pencil to do that as well then the four let's find the four on the number line and it's over here on the right so we put a dot there to represent the four then a two we can put a dot right here to represent the two the negative three that's back over to the left between negative four and negative two and then zero, put a dot there. And so now we have those numbers in order. They go negative six, negative three, zero, two, four. That number line, it helps us understand the order of a group of numbers. Another set of numbers or definition for a set of numbers that we've learned also is integers. Those are like whole numbers except you'll have negative, zero, and positive values. And when we talk about integers and also whole numbers, we never talk about decimal numbers like 6.1. That would not be considered an integer or a whole number. It's just non-decimal numbers that we're considering when we discuss integers and whole numbers. Let's try another problem. This one will just have a little bit larger values of integers. Arrange those numbers in order. What we can do is we can just think of a number line. And we don't have to put a bunch of tick marks on it. We could put zero on it. And we remember that all numbers to the left of that are negative. All numbers to the right are positive. And let's just start putting numbers in place. And we could just write them right above the number line. So negative 385, we know that would be pretty far to the left over here. And then we have a 538, that would be pretty far over here to the right. A 385, that would be in front of or less than 538, so that would be to the left. Numbers that are less than another number, they're always to the left of it on a number line. And also when we write them down, they'll be to the left of it if we're writing them in order. Negative 835. Now think about that. It's going to be less than negative 385. It'd be to the left of it because it's more negative. So we'd say negative 835 over here. And then 533. Well, actually, that's going to go in between 385 and 538. So it needs to go in right here, 533. So let's just write those over again as a group, negative 835 comma negative 385 comma positive 385 those are opposites of each other there 533 
and 538. And so that's our group of numbers in order. One thing that people get confused on a lot is like negative 835 and negative 385, comparing those two numbers. They might think, well, negative 835 is greater than negative 385, but it's not. It's more negative. You have to think of it like that. It's a larger negative value, which means it's less than negative 385. Using a number line helps you understand why negative 835 is less than negative 385. So if you ever get confused on the arrangement of numbers in a set of numbers, just draw yourself a number line or visualize one in your head to help you figure out where each number goes. The second part of this lesson is on rounding numbers. Basically simplifying a whole number. Let's say we had this. 16,587. And let's say we wanted to round that to the nearest thousands place. And so what we do, if we want to round it to the nearest thousands, is that number we want to round to, we circle it. So let's circle the six. We want to round to the nearest thousands and put an arrow over the digit to the right. That's the one we're going to either round up or leave alone. Remember these two rules I have over to the right in red. If it's less than 5, if that arrow marked digit is less than 5, then you leave the circle digit alone. You don't round it up. If it's 5 or greater, then you round that circle digit up. If the arrow marked digit is 5 or greater, then you round that circle digit up. So for this example here, if we want to simplify this by rounding to the nearest thousands place, we would increase that 6 by 1. We would round up. That's what you do when you round up, is you increase by 1. And so we would write this 17,000. That's the expression of 16,587 rounded to the nearest thousand. Now why would you ever want to round a number? What purpose does that have? Well, as you can see, it makes that number a little bit simpler to think about. Maybe you wanted to add two numbers together and you just wanted an estimate of what their answer would be. Well, you could round both of those numbers and that would make it a simpler addition problem. A lot of times scientists, they'll be doing some calculations and they come up with numbers with just a whole bunch of decimal places and what they want to round to maybe one or two decimal places. And it just makes it easier to work with that particular number. So that's usually why you use rounding numbers or why you would round a number is just to make it a little bit simpler to work with. Let's do a practice problem. I want you to round this number to the nearest millions place. Or in other words, round to the nearest million. And remember what we do, we circle that digit that we want to round up or leave alone. That would be the 5. The 5 is in the millions place. So circle that one, put an arrow over the digit to the right, which is in the hundred thousands place. That's a 2. If it's less than 5, we leave the circle digit alone. And so that means we're going to write this 300. 85 million. We put zeros in all of the other places. 385 million. That would be rounded to the nearest million. That number rounded to the nearest million. Look at practice problem D. I want you to round this one to the nearest billion. So why don't you pause the CD and try to figure that one out. Rounding it to the nearest billion, that means we would circle this too because it's in the billions place. Put an arrow over that hundred millions digit which is a five. If it's five or greater that means we round the circle digit up. So we'll round that up to a three and so our answer is three billion. Lots of zeros for this one. That's how we would write it. Three billion something to think about here that we rounded up basically almost 500 million right because we had 2 billion 509 million when that arrow mark digit is a 5 when you round up you get quite a bit different number for example if we would have had 2 billion 909 million 
rounding up to three billion that wouldn't be much different than two billion nine hundred and nine million so if you're using this number if you're wanting to estimate something rounding up like that sometimes is not a real good idea you just get such a different number but all we're doing right now is just getting practice with rounding so if that arrow mark digit if it's less than five you leave the circle digit as it is if that arrow mark digit is five or greater you round that circle digit up one digit okay well that's all for lesson two